So I've made some things with some mildly complicated logic, so I, I've made a video for it before, but I kind of just wanted to, well, explain what the basic Boolean logic blocks do so that you can better use them. Uh, I am only going to go over the Boolean logic ones because the other ones could be their whole separate uh, video, and that includes the NOR gate, the OR gate, the XOR, the NOT gate, and the AND gate. So first we have the NOT gate. If I go ahead and put a signal into it, this is the condition that it will take in. Every logic gate takes in a condition and then out- well, one or more conditions and then outputs, like a, an output based on that condition and how it compares that condition to the other ones. The condition for this NOT gate, or NOR gate, is am I pressing space? Now, this will automatically trigger whatever I put in front of it. For now, I'm just going to put a light in front of it right here, just for explanation, and then I'm going to hook this up to that. So if I am not pressing space, it will trigger the output which this is going into. And we can see that there. And then if I press space, it will stop doing that because I am pressing space. And it won't, like, turn on the red light, but if I let go of space, then it will again. However, this is not actually a NOT gate, it is a NOR gate, which means that any input that you put into it can do that. I can put in space into it, and then I could also put in an XOR into it. And now, if I put that on left click, then I can either left click or press space, and it will trigger either of those as doing it. Hitting space right now, letting go, hitting left click right now, it'll do it for either one. It is the space input or the XOR input, which is why it is an or a NOR gate, not OR. Going off from that, we have a normal OR gate. This will trigger if any of the inputs are, like, not equal to one, but like if any of them are triggering it, then it will trigger. It does not have to be all of them, but it can be any one of them. I'm gonna, yeah, I set that to space. This is kind of similar, however, if I, instead of turning it off when I press either, it will turn on when I press either. Holding left click right now, letting go, hitting space right now, letting go, hitting both of them right now, it still works. I'm go now going to use these as the inputs because the rest of the things have a basic, like, I, I need more than one input to show what I can put into it. And now that I've explained OR gates, I'm going to use those for it. So I'm going to set this one to left click, and then duplicate this, and set this one to right click. So that way I can just alternate them, use both of them if I want, and then it'll, it'll be fine. Here we have an XOR gate, which stands for an exclusive OR gate. So this triggers one, one of the inputs into it is on, and it can be either of the inputs, but it stops triggering when both of them are on. Here, I'll run this into the block there, into the hue light panel. But like, one of them on, one of them on, it works, but if both of them are on, then it stops working. I typically use XOR gates as, like, normal OR gates here, because I like being able to trigger off the input by having more than one going into it. However, you can also just do that with, like, a, a simple NOT gate outside of it, an OR gate. So like, if you're triggering the NOT gate, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to, ah, uh, how do I do this? I think I was thinking of it wrong, I don't think you can use it that way this simply. But it is very useful for, I can take in one input at a time, if both inputs are true, then it just shuts it off completely. Next up we have the AND gate, and the AND gate is kind of the opposite of the XOR gate. Um, it won't trigger when one input is pressed. As you can see here. It just won't. And it won't trigger if the other input is pressed either. But if both inputs are pressed, then it triggers. It needs the first input and the second input in order to fully work. It needs both of them at once. 
I would also like to note that all of these logic blocks that I've mentioned so far that can take in multiple inputs also work with however many inputs you want, so now that I have three inputs going into that, it needs all three of them to be active for it to output. Fun fact, we didn't actually used to have NOR gates, so what I would do before we had NOR gates is I would use an XOR gate, and then basically a normal NOR gate, except I, I would use a distance sensor so that it would constantly be outputting, and I'd hook that into that, so then, then it would constantly output. I have to hook this into the light, and then that would be triggered, and what I would do was I would hook another thing into it so that if I pressed the button, then it would turn off. Because an XOR already has the one input, and that's basically using three blocks, you could make a NOR gate on your own before we add them. One more thing about AND gates that I forgot to mention is that they can actually combine number values. So if I hook this into a number display, and this is on 0 0.5, and this is on 0 0.1, then both of these will be triggered. I'm gonna set this one to right-click. This one is triggered like that, but if I hit right-click too, it'll add that 0 0.1 and that 0 0.5 together to make 0 0.6. So that's neat. Uh, I think it does have a cap of 1 there, so that's also neat and you can use some of the other addition stuff to make it higher than that, but they will add every input that you put into them. And then finally, it's not a boolean block, but I did have to give it an honorable mention, even though it's way more complex than I can explain in this video, but the accumulator is just a block that can store data values that you put into it, and you can charge it up or decrease it, which is why this one is on negative. I'm gonna delete the positive control from that. And I'm going to hook the accumulator into the number thing. Yep, did that. And if I hit positive on this, it will go up, and if I hit negative on this, it will go down. So basically, we have a way to store numbers and then use them for stuff, which you can use for a ton of stuff, which people have been using to control the speed of servos. Because a servo, if you put it at max speed, it will just go at max speed. But if you hook up an accumulator into it, then setting it to 0.5 will only make the servo go to 0.5. And you can control the speed of which you hook up, like, of which you increase the accumulator. So you can basically control the speed of a servo to be lower than it is using an accumulator. If I hook this up to negative 1 and 1 then we can, I can actually show you that. Hook up a servo into here, right there, and then hook this up to it. And then I'm just going to unbind the controls from this. We have a fast speed here. Actually, I, I'm going to rehook up the controls into that because I need to show that it's a fast speed. But we have a fast speed here, but if I should increase the accumulator, you can see it's moving a lot slower than that. And we can increase the speed even further by changing the scale to 2, or th this can go up to 100. I'm going to do 2. And that increases the speed of which it fills up and drains. And then another thing we could do is, it's not great for this specific setup, but I'm going to use it to demonstrate it, is that we can use steps. And that means that we can input and just take away with a button press. And if these weren't set to 1, the scale is currently at 2. But if the scale is 1, then it will go up by 1 or down by 1 every time it receives an input that is of 1. But if I change this to be a scale of 0 0.10, then we should have 10 steps, like that, on each one. And if I hold the button, it doesn't go because it's using the steps, but if I tap it, then it can go. That is another thing that the accumulator is good at. Say you had a wheel that you wanted to count how many times it has, like, this has been at the top. I have this angle sensor that will trigger when it's at the top, and then I have that running into an accumulator, which I will set the minimum to zero, the maximum it can be 100, 
and then we'll use a scale of 1 still, because we want it to go up once at each time, and then we'll use steps. So then I can hook that into a number display, like this, and every time that this is facing up, once per time, because this is a range and I don't want it to increase constantly, that's what the steps do, then once a turn it'll go up one step. So if I go like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and yeah, as you can see, we can use this as a counter to see how many times a wheel is spun in a given time. Anyways, this, this is a fairly short video. I do hope you enjoyed watching it, uh, and if you have any questions, as always, leave it down. Leave them in the comments below. I'm not the best person at logic, and I didn't even get into any of the, like, how to make hinges smoother using accumulators or anything like that. I did go over speed a little bit, but honestly not too, too much. But if you did enjoy it, uh, consider subscribing. Last time I said that, I gained, like, 70 subscribers in a day. It was insane. Well, not last time I said it. The time before last time that I said it. That was insane. So, I, I do hope that you enjoyed. If you have any comments, like I said, leave them down below, as always. And I hope you enjoyed. See ya! I, I think I just said that I hoped you enjoyed, like, nine times. But you know what? I, I really do hope that you enjoyed. And I hope that you find everything from this.